Two Wheels is brought to you by Bridgestone, the best tyre for all bikes. Red Square Ultimate Activation. And Bike Buyers, the easiest way to sell your motorcycle. Download the app now or give James a call. Welcome to the show. First up, we're going to do some tar scrambling. And then later on, we're visiting Kyle Army for the first time in many years. Yes, welcome to the Western Cape. We're riding around near Cape Town on the BMW R90 Scrambler launch for the South African market. We did attend the world launch earlier this year and the bike has finally arrived in South Africa. Now, R90 Scrambler, well, there's two connotations there. R90 dates back to the original BMW Superbike that Steve McLaughlin raced in America when it started out as Superbikes. That bike was called the BMW R90 because it was 900 cc's. So they brought that name back with the R90 street bike and now we've got the Scrambler version. We've been rabbiting on about the fact that there's a new market out there. They're calling it the Scrambler market. All it really is is a basic road bike with semi knobbly tires, sit up and beg handlebars and a small chopped off seat. It looks like the seat has been bitten off by a bulldog at the back of the motorcycle. Fashionable, not so sure if it's that comfortable. Mind you, after having ridden 190 odd k's today, it turned out quite comfortable actually. As far as pillions go, it's a tiny little pillion seat. So if you do have two big people, they're not going to fit onto the bike too well. I found it a little bit of a misnomer, it being a scrambler. It's definitely not a scrambler in the traditional sense of the word, uh, where you've got a more upright uh, riding position. I found myself on the handlebars quite a bit, which being a big guy, kind of over a long ride could get a bit sore. But that said, it handles very, very well. It's very stable. And even on the roads that weren't of such a good quality, the road holding and the, the lines, they held its lines beautifully. I keep wondering how many configurations of the Boxer twin engine that we can have in the motorcycle market. Because it seems to me like BMW just keep reinventing themselves. Let's not forget that the Bavarian Motor Works, which was started way back before the Second World War, they made the flat twin motor originally. And so it's been around that long. So from the 1930s, and here we are, what, 75, 80 years later, and we've still got that same design engine. So it says something for the heritage of BMW. It also says a lot for the lifestyle of the brand. And they very much are trying to go with the lifestyle and the image with this new brand of motorcycle called the Scrambler. So the flat twin motor, what's it like to ride around on? Well, it's fairly pokey. It's got quite a lot of torque, although the torque is right up at 6,000 RPM. So they've done that to obviously attain a bit more horsepower, just over 100 horsepower at the rear wheel, which is quite a lot for this sort of motorbike. The tires that are fitted in standard trim are these sort of knobbly tires. Now, I'm not sure if you're gonna be riding on the road a great deal, is that the right sort of tire? If you're gonna ride on the road, then I would be fitting road tires but it does mean that you've got some sort of off-road ability with those knobbly tires. Suspension-wise, it's fairly limited, so you'd wonder how much off-road that you could actually do with a scramble. I think you could go down a dirt road and that sort of stuff, but nothing really too rough. I don't think the bike is designed for that, but it will allow you to, you know, if you've got a dirt driver, you can do that sort of thing. Well, the R90 is actually quite a statement bike. If you if you like the trips to the coffee shops with your mates and stuff like that, this is definitely the type of bike you want to be on. 
Um, I'm not too sure about the tyre option that they've got available uh, today for us to, to ride the bikes on. And uh, I would definitely choose more of a road-based tyre if that's your type of riding. But uh, other than that, I can't really fault the bike. The bike is excellent, you know, and uh, definitely a head turner. So, yeah, I, you know, riding the bike, I just can't stop staring down at the tank and looking around. It's uh, definitely something that I dig to have. Well, wheel sizes are 17 inch tire on the rear and a 19 on the front compared to their road model, which has got a 17 inch front. So what does the 19 actually do? It certainly gives you a lot more stability over the bumps. And of course, if you're going to do any kind of off-road riding, it allows the bike to be less twitchy in the dirt and a lot safer, of course. So I'm quite surprised, actually, at the tyre configuration, how well it's worked today, because we've been riding on some fairly gnarly roads at fairly good speeds, and it handled it pretty well. At just under 190,000 Rand, this is not a cheap motorcycle, but this is the top of the range model, which comes with heated grips and all the additional extras that BMW brought into the country. There will be a base model available in probably six months time it'll be around about 170,000 rand but even at that price it's not a cheap motorcycle so what do you get for that kind of money well you get a status you get a look that people seem to be craving at the moment now i can see a lot of newcomers coming into the world of motorcycling because of bikes like this they look safe they handle well they're very basic easy to ride and of course they are really eye-catching you know, I think BMW has been taking their branding to, to lots of different spaces the last couple of years. What we're seeing now is a, is a natural extension of that, that exploration. Uh, in many respects, the bike is it's a good looking bike, uh, but it's also the type of unit, what you see is what you get. Speed wise, not too bad. I think you probably get around 200 k's per hour if you really cracked it on and got down behind the aluminium fuel tank and lying flat on the tank there. But it's really comfortable at around about 140, just over the legal speed limit. That's where this bike is the most comfortable. It's got the most torque in top gear. And while I talk about gears, the six-speed transmission is just about the slickest I've felt on a BMW in a long, long time. So they've really gone to town in making this gearbox work properly. There's quite a lot of mechanical noise that comes out of the air oil-cooled motor, but you'd expect that because there's nothing surrounding the cylinders to take away some of the noise. But it's not obtrusive at all. In fact, the exhaust system that it comes with, the Acropovic, sounds absolutely fantastic. Somehow they've got the pipe to work below the legal limit as far as sound goes and emission controls. But once you get on the pipe, it does sound really good. My impression of the R90 Scrambler today was good fun. It's a back to basics motorcycle. I like it because it's small. It hasn't got all the big fairings and lights and everything from the GS, although it's a stripped down version of the GS. I enjoyed it so much because it, it just captures the, the essence of motorcycling again, because that's all you need is you just need a, a bike with a big engine. I enjoyed the, the passes more than I thought I would. I was petrified because of those Karoo 3s that it's got on. I thought that the grip might not be there and because of the bigger 19 inch wheel, it doesn't turn in as, as quickly. But I promise you, once that thing is on the move, it was good fun. So would you buy an R90 Scrambler? Well, if you had the money, of course you would. Would it be an alternative to other bikes? I think this could be the type of bike that becomes the second bike in the garage that you can pop down to the supermarket, pop down to the gym with your wife or partner on the back. I think it also could be quite suitable for ladies because it's got a low seat height and it's very simple to ride and uncluttered. The one speeder up front does its job, so keeps your mind on what's going on around you. So I would say that this bike is going to be pretty much a second bike in most garages. So just a thank you to BMW for inviting us down to the Western Cape for today. And as you can see on a day like today, Cape Town is glorious. Probably one of the best cities in the world at this time of year.